I am joined here today by the PG Mall International Referee Development Manager, Mr. Richard Beebe. Richard, thank you so much for joining us today. First no, of all, I wanted to ask you, what are the key objectives that the Elite Referee Development Program aims to achieve in the next three years? I think, I think it's four ways, really. Um, the first of all, it hopefully will uh, infuse and promote refereeing in India, full stop. Uh, that, that's, that's a major goal uh, because we want to create a, a pathway for future Indian referees to come through. Um, so we want in years to come uh, referees to start at the lowest level of the game and work their way up so they're ready to referee at the elite level. Uh, we also want to be able to put in place all the support mechanisms required for Indian referees to operate at that higher echelon. Um, and, and, and lastly, we want to put in a coaching structure that assists and help referees on their journey towards elite refereeing. So they're the, they're the, they're the three main aims of a, a development plan going forward. So, so, Richard, how will the panel of professional referees be identified? I mean, will this include existing ISL referees or will it be much broader than that? Well, no, uh, you, you've got some very good referees on that panel already. Let's don't underestimate the skills that they've got. Um, so in the very short term, you'll probably see a panel which is in existence now. But the key to it is, uh, is the drive for referees to become elite referees in the future and to push those already on it to make their standard even better. So competition is very healthy. <laughs> um, so uh, I expect your elite panel to stay virtually as it is in the very short term, but referees to really want to push their way onto that panel in the future. Right, Richard. So just a bit more on how you assess the standard of current Indian refereeing and, and what are you looking forward to the most to develop with the new programme? Okay, uh, I think refereeing in India has moved on uh, quite a lot in the last few years. Since, since I first came to India six years ago, Indian referees moved on a hell of a lot. Uh, we're getting more consistency in approach, we're getting fitter referees, we're getting referees more in tune with the Indian league in the ISL league, we're getting referees who can, who are more readily uh, able to uh, uh, and aware of what's going on in Indian football. Let's take it back a step where the Indian Super League came into being, a lot of foreign players came in and Indian referees just were not used to that style of football and that style of challenge from those particular players, they are far more used to that now. And therefore, don't underestimate how much Indian referees moved on in the last few years. Moving forward, though, we've got to improve even more because no organisation can stand still, no referee can stand still. So it's about that continuous journey of learning and progressing. So we're now working with the referees regarding what was the root cause of a problem? How was that problem missed? Where was your positioning on the field of play? How do you work with the players on the field? What's your rapport like with the players on the field of play? How would you work through the game together with the players? So we've got law. Now we're working on the interpretation of the law and getting in a consistent approach on the field of play to how we make decisions uh, uh, and, and hopefully how we make the right decisions. So the journey is a continuous journey. It will never, ever stop. But in summary, refereeing in India has, has, has really has improved in the last three or four years. Yeah. And just speaking about improvement, Richard, what are some of the short term measures that can be taken to improve the standard of Indian referees? Of course, the program is for much long term development. But what about the short term measures? I think the short term measures, particularly in the, in the Indian Super League, is OK, we know there's only 11 teams. What is their style of football? How do they play their football? Where are the challenges from individual teams and players on the field of play? And, and, and putting concepts and strategies in place to how we deal with those. So it's about referees learning about how clubs go about playing their football. It's exactly the same as a club playing another club and they do their homework. Exactly the same for referees. You can't prejudge when you go onto the field of play as a referee, 
but you should be aware of what's likely to occur on the field of play. So we're working a lot with the style of football, how the club's set up, how they match up, etc. So we're giving all of that information to referees. But more importantly, we're building a culture in where the referees are confident that they can self-analyse their games afterwards and we can help them in areas of development where it's required. But also, equally important, celebrate areas where they've done well. Richard, um, can we expect technological aids going forward in the Hero ISL? And if yes, what are the kind of technological aids that we can expect? Right. Well, you've also got you, you've got one big technological aid in already, and that's the communications kit, which the referee and the assistant referee and the fourth official use to talk to each other. And how that's used can't be underestimated. So that's already there. Um, so a team working together. Move, moving forward, obviously, the two big ones everybody talks about is VAR and goal line technology. Um, and uh, I know that colleagues in India are, are beginning to review whether uh, that will pay dividends for your football going forward. We use it, obviously, extensively in England. Um, and there is two models. There's the full VAR and what they call VAR light. Um, and, 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 and much of that depends on the resource available. It's a safety net for refereeing. Uh, VAR is predominantly there for those big impact decisions that unfortunately the on-field decision is clearly not quite correct. So it's a safety net, a safety blanket to, to make sure that those high impact decisions don't overly influence the game and the correct decision is reached. Whether you have them in India, that's a matter for India in terms of, of the uh, Football Association working together with the league regarding it, it, its incorporation into Indian football. Yeah, and lastly, since you brought up VAR, Richard, on that, how long did it take for the PG Mall to implement VAR in the Premier League? Um, and what are the challenges that the PG Mall faced? And so, so that if the Indian Super League uh, was to implement VAR going forward, what are the learnings that can be taken from the Premier League's experience, for example? Okay, it's, it's, not, a, it's not a short-term fix. Uh, we spent in England two years just researching VAR before we did anything. So we looked at how other leagues, uh, sorry, other uh, sports uh, uh, use similar. So cricket, which obviously you're very aware of, uh, uh, rugby, etc. So we looked at how versions of VAR were used in other uh, in other parts of, uh, of the sporting environment. Uh, we then put in place a training program for our referees for when they are VAR operatives. That training programme took about 12 to 18 months to get in place and for the referees to feel comfortable. So we every week for a season, we did what we called offline training. So we had a VAR operating, but obviously the on-field officials didn't know anything about it uh, during the game. So uh, it took us a long while. We are now in our fourth year of VAR in England live. Our first two years were massive learning curves. We didn't get anything, everything right at all. And we probably went uh, um, far too insular on getting every little decision right. And that's not what VAR is about. VAR, VAR is about correcting clear and obvious errors. And we possibly overdid it. So it took us two years from going live to learn how to use VAR for its maximum benefit, minimum interference, to a position now in England where the competitions and the spectators are relatively happy on how we use VAR. Big learning curve. If India incorporate VAR, please do not think it's an overnight remedy. It is not. An awful lot of work has got to go into it. Well, that was some fascinating insight, uh, Mr. Bibi. Thank you so much for joining us today and uh, looking forward to seeing this program being successful in the next uh, year. Well, time. so am I. And many thanks for the opportunity of meeting you today. And uh, any time, be, be glad to uh, keep everybody updated on, on how the plan's moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. Pleasure. Cheers. Thank you very much.